and welcome to Hops and Bros. This week... We're talking bubbles. Natural bubbles. For an open window on a crappy world Max and Chris from Hops and Bros. All right, so this week we're going to be talking natural carbonation. Um, historically, it was pretty much the only way to get bubbles into your beer, and it's also something that naturally occurs uh, with your yeast. Your yeast produces ethanol, but it also creates CO2, uh, which is a little different than forced carbonation. But anyways, natural carbonation, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the best ways to have more natural bubbles in your beer. Yeah. Uh, Chris, any, any, any stories about, about natural <laughs> I, carbonation? I can actually speak from experience because, uh, as you guys know, I used to home brew at home. But home brew, yes, of course, home brewing at home. But uh, I was actually home brewing before Max happened in my life <laughs> yeah way before way you're, before you're the you're the one who introduced me to actual beer like enjoying good craft beer but also brewing beer i never brewed beer before i met you which is pretty interesting when you, you think of where we are now so we, we, we could say that i kind of like corrupted <laughs> max into brewing uh corrupted or introduced uh yeah. to my future <laughs> livelihood i don't know anyways yes please continue. i would go with that so um <laughs> Started started on brewing and my first experience with a natural carbonation was a total disaster. What actually happened is that I added the prime sugar but um, was uh, left with no more time to bottle it. So just popped the cap on the cardboard and left it overnight to uh, put it in bottles the day after. Logic, right? Bubbles won't escape, won't get infected. Easy, right? 2 a.m. Pop! My dad's screaming upstairs. Get upstairs, blah, blah, blah. A big, big, big beer geyser was from the floor to the ceiling. Probably eight feet high. Beer everywhere. Uh, yeah, I had to clean that up. It smelled like beer for like two weeks in my parents' place. And uh, the beer was actually bottled, which uh, I won't tell you guys what it felt like. But seriously, uh, natural... Carbonation is one hell of a tricky thing for someone that doesn't know about it. And if you want to get yeah, as a brewer, yeah. as a brewer, you're telling me the story, and I see so many red flags. It's pretty funny. Um, yeah, first off, if you're gonna add your priming sugar, don't don't walk away from it because it is going to referment. So it's gonna create a lot more CO2. And because it's it's probably priming sugar, uh, it's gonna be simple sugars where your yeast is gonna be very adamant at eating it's gonna it's gonna use it very fast very easily so create a lot of co2 very very fast um not only that but after you bottled it to me it breaks my heart in the sense that it's now exposed to the air so very much prone to infection <laughs> brewers are very adamant at, at sanitizing everything and anything that is going to come in contact with beer so that's pretty funny yeah. uh, but home brewing I, I totally get it in that situation i would have done the same thing Exactly. Still, bottle, still try it out, you know. <laughs> but the beer turned out actually it was a it was an IPA, red IPA that turned out to be tasting like a barley wine. I'm not that sure what happened. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure how much alcohol we had left in this, but a lot, a lot. Um, all this to bring to a more prof professional level of natural carbonation. A very, very good example out there. If you guys know uh, Brasserie Dupont that brews the Saison Dupont, it's an instant classic. They are still natural carbonating this beer. And if you want to get a little bit more into the detail, there's a very, very good documentary out there made by Good Beer Hunting on Saison Dupont. They're showcasing all the old equipment, uh, how they produce the beer and the whole like very tradition behind every single step of making this legendary beer so i'm like the link is going to be in the description check it out but natural combination max how can you not make a mess out of it if you're own brewing or if you're brewing on a professional professional scale uh as a brewer 
We're going to go back to a saison de pont for a second there because they're, they're doing it perfectly and in the best way possible for that style. I think natural carbonation is great for some styles of beer. Other styles, doesn't really matter. Um, the, the good thing with saison de pont is, is they actually put the bottles on the side to put as much contact to the air as possible for that yeast and, and sugar that's, that's left in the beer. Uh, it creates a lot more esters, a lot more flavor from that beer and a very nice, very intense uh, carbonation. But the, the difference, the big difference between uh, forced carbonation and natural carbonation is actually the size of the bubbles. Uh, so your natural carbonation, a lot smaller, uh, a lot smoother on the palate. Uh, forced carbonation, a lot bigger, it, you have more carbonic bite. Carbonic bite is actually from the process of carbonating in the sense that your CO2 doesn't really want to go in solution. So you kind of have to trick it. You trick it with temperature and with uh, pressure. Uh, and before it becomes carbonation, uh, it actually goes through a couple different phases. One of them is um, uh, carbonic acid. So the first thing it does, it creates an acid. So you will have that carbonic bite. Uh, now, when you have a bottle and it's carbonated, it's actually perpetually going through the motions of being in solution, out of solution, in solution. And according to Henry's law, uh, the proportion of CO2 that's in your beverage is also the same as in the air above, and it keeps on going. Uh, now, for natural carbonation, how to not fuck it up. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. The first one is, is by using math. I'm not a math guy, but I'm, I'm slowly learning what you have to do. Uh, you can calculate how much sugar you're going to need per bottle or per batch to add in to be able to figure out how much carbonation you're going to get from that. Uh, so adding sugar, priming sugar to your, your fermenter is not necessarily, well, to your, I guess, bottling bucket at this point when home brewing. It's not a bad idea. It's the best way to do it. Uh, it's going to be pretty equal. Uh, the other way would be to actually add sugar to each bottle in the perfect amount. Yeah. Um, on a larger scale, it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, you can't really do it per bottle, or if you do, is it going to be accurate, or do you have the system to do it? You really have to be set up for it. Yeah. So the way they tend to do it is actually by back adding wort, because wort is basically fermentable sugar. So in the bright tank, they will back add some wort in to the perfect amount they need by doing math, uh, and then they'll bottle their product from there. They'll also add new yeast. So that's the, the key thing as well, is that you want some yeast in there, but you also don't want, you want a specific character. You don't necessarily want the old yeast that's already been used up, you want new yeast. So you're actually taking your product from one tank to the other to the other, which can cause other oxidation problems. Um, so when you say okay. back, back, back tracking, back, back, back at, back adding, back, yeah. back adding word, is it like you produce a new word and then you back Exactly. You produce you, you a whole new word to add it. And you don't ferment, you put it directly into the bright tank, and then from there you kind of bubble it up, try to mix it as much as you can, and okay. then you start bottling your bottles. Uh, another big brewery that's doing this, which when I learned this I was pretty surprised, but it kind of makes sense, uh, is Sierra Nevada. Uh, okay. For their IPAs, they actually do natural carbonation in every single bottle. Um, now, this process takes two weeks uh, more production, which is why I was kind of surprised. But it kind of makes sense because you, you want to keep those aromatic features in your beer. Yeah. Uh, and you also want to limit the oxygen that's going to go in. So by naturally carbonating those beer, you're actually using that oxygen up and you're eliminating from your bottle. You're actually transforming it into something new. You're, 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 you're adding CO2 and you're protecting that beer at the same time. So it's kind of, it's kind of neat to be doing that, but it does take more time. So yeah. as a brewer, the more time you take, the more time you can't sell a beer, the less influx of money you have. So you kind of have to make the decision where is is the quality of the beer and then the flavor uh, worth it? Is it really what you want or is forced carbonation an option? Yeah, because uh, if we look at it, uh, our good friend Sammy from Gettykos that just opened up his brewery is yeah. uh, natural carbonating his, uh, his beer right now. And for him, it was very a question of uh, expenses. Uh, having like a bright tank and a canning line or whatever bottling line it's quite expensive so for him turning around and having uh just a smaller kettle where he can add the beer 
sugar it up and then transfer it into bottles with just a classic uh is it is it pressure or gravity fed uh bottling system way less it's probably pressure yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's way less way less expensive takes a little bit more time but Calibre. in the end turns out that the beer is actually amazing he has a great yeah. level of carbonation every single time in every single bottles but takes a little bit more time to produce the beer in the end process. But I, I love the, um, the touch you said about the IPA, the fact that it creates kind of like new CO2 to kind of like fight back the yeah, oxidation it, it kinda, that it's in it there. It kind of protects that beer. And also you're avoiding um, the flash off of those flavors. So say you dry hop, uh, you kind of want to trap those flavors in. You don't want to evacuate anything. But when you're carbonating, uh, from time to time, you're going to have to depressurize that tank. You're going to have to let uh, that CO2 out and it's flashing off those flavors that you want. So doing it in a bottle, not necessarily a bad idea. And again, going back to getting curious, it's interesting. I didn't know he was doing this. Yeah. Uh, and it's always a, a cost cost thing, right? Where do you want to put the money up front to have that bright tank? Or do you think you'll be okay by waiting two weeks for your, your product? Um, yeah, there's a million ways to do it. Well, not a million, but there's a, a big amount of ways that you can decide to go about a problem. Yeah. Uh, very homebrewer mentality, but homebrewers basically brought back the whole uh, craft beer industry. So there's good everywhere. We can't blame them uh, from them. And natural carbonation, seriously, in Belgian style beers, saison, and like really brings Even sours. Honestly, like sours, it's... lambics, uh, like any kind of those very again Belgium style beers. I find the natural carbonation really suits them. Uh, even um, lagers to a certain point, like German style beers that are naturally carbonated, can be really interesting. Uh, and not just lagers, but uh, Germany also has ales. I don't know if you know this, uh, but they, they kind of also revolutionized the whole top fermenting game. So to have that, those beers as well being naturally carbonated, it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. I, I'm stoked uh, because it's, it, I'm totally honest, it's the first time I'm talking about that subject <laughs> ever. And uh, I, I'm very, very impressed how like, it's one little thing that we just never talk about, carbonation. It's it's one aspect of the beer, but no one really talks about it. And for me, it's a very important aspect. It's one thing that I do judge a lot when I'm drinking my beers, is the carbonation level. And, and it's also one thing that differentiate, differentiates the beer from any other alcoholic product in the sense that every sip you take, the, the uh, carbonation is going to cleanse your palate automatically uh, just due to the nature of the product, which makes it a more popular kind of beverage for any situation. Versus wine, uh, it's not carbonated. So you, the flavors you have, they don't cleanse your palate. Boom, straight in. You're stuck uh, with I think it's an, advan an advantage to, to craft beer, or to beer, sorry, just beer in general. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it does, makes us different from everyone else. So in general, Beer one, wine zero, for the first uh, round. Wine has its uh, wine has its advantages. But, I know. Uh, but anyways. But we're not a wine like channel. <laughs> we're not a, not a wine channel. We could be. Uh, no. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe. Let us know in the comments below which uh, episode you would like to see next on the Craft Beer 101. I I also noticed that Party Gal was not brought up, uh, what, which whoop? is one that. We, we mentioned in a couple of videos back and no one wanted to know about Party Giles. <laughs> but uh, hey. I remember, I see, I, yeah. I know. I but know. You, don't, you don't want it, then that's fine. But if you're a yeah. real OG, you remember uh, Grapes and Lads. So if you remember Grapes and Lads, oh, then put down in the comment <laughs> just the Grapes and Lads part. I, I want to hear about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can bring it back if you guys really want. But anyways, thanks. We'll see you later. <laughs>